All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to create a game manager. And a game manager is just a thing in the scene that watches what's going on and does stuff based on that. So like in a platforming game, it might be something that manages what level you're on. Uh, in a game like this, it's gonna be something that manages the creation and or activation and deactivation of the bricks when they get hit by the ball. Uh, it's also going to be looking for if something happens to end the level, and if the level ends, it'll do something. So to do this, we're just going to go to main. We're going to right click, create empty, and I'm going to call this game object game manager. I like to put my game manager off to the side of the screen, and I also like to give it a icon so that I can actually see its name. Now the thing about giving it an icon like this is no matter how far I zoom out, that icon still takes up the same amount of space on the screen. So if I zoom way in, or if I zoom way out, it's still taking up the same proportion of screen space, which makes it pretty handy if you're zoomed out working on UI but you want to be able to access this really quickly, you can just click on it because it's still going to be there. Kind of a nice feature. Okay, so to actually monitor all this game manager stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our um, scripts folder I'm going to create a script for the game manager. And this script is going to be called, surprise enough, game manager. So I'm going to right click, create new C sharp script, and then we'll call this game manager. I'm going to open this up in mono develop. So I'll just double click it and it'll come up here. So here are the scripts I already had my brick health manager, my brick color controller, my ball controller, my ball stop. So I'm going to go to the game manager here, and the first thing we're going to do is create a reference to those spawn positions. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see it better. Uh, okay, so I've got these spawn positions here. Now, as they are in the world, they're game objects, but every game object has a transform attached to it, so I could refer to these as game objects, or I could refer to them as transforms. If I refer to them as game object, it's referring to the object in the world if I refer to them as transforms, it's referring to its uh, XYZ position, its uh, rotation, and its scale. Oh, one thing too, you'll notice now if I click on these game objects, they don't have the same positions they used to, because these positions are now in reference to the spawn point. So my spawn point's here, and this first one is negative uh, 2.8 units to the left, or 2.8 units to the left and 1.1 units down. But if I were to take this out of my spawn point, you'd see that its positions are the same. So don't freak out about that. I'll put it back in there. All right, so I can either reference the objects themselves, in which case I can get the transform from the object, or I can just start out by referencing the transform, in which case I don't need to get the transform. So I'm not gonna do anything with these objects other than reference their position in space. So when I create a reference to them in the script, I'm gonna create it as a set of transforms. Because I'm creating a reference to more than one, I'm going to do it as an array. So I'm going to do public transform, open close square brackets for an array, and I'll call this spawn points. So now if I save this, I jump back into Unity, you'll see, oh, yep, and I need to attach the script to the game manager so it actually knows what it's doing. So I'll go to my game manager, attach the game manager script, and you'll see that we have this set up for spawn points. Now, if I hit the window shade, the little triangle next to it, I can tell it its size, and then I can manually pull each of these. Or, what I can do right now, I'm going to lock this so that I don't see anything else even if I click away. So I'm just gonna click that little lock up in the corner. And then I'm gonna choose all my spawn points by uh, shift selecting so that I have them all, and then pull them over here until I see that plus. And then there they are. Now I'm gonna unlock this. And if I go back to Game Manager, I've got my six spawn points. Uh, okay, so there we go. I've got a reference to my spawn points. Now, the first thing I wanna do is when the game first starts up, I want it to pick uh, a certain number of spawn points. So in the actual game, I don't think it ever does more than four. I'm gonna pick a certain number of spawn points and I'm going to decide if I wanna do the square brick or the triangle brick. 
and I'm going to place it on one of those spawn points. So the next thing I need to do is create a reference to the bricks. So let's do public. And I want to actually grab the whole object for the bricks. So I'm going to call these game object. And we'll do square brick. And we'll do public game object triangle brick. So I have a reference to both of them. Now if I save this and pop back into Unity, I can pull these um, after it's done compiling. I have a place for the square brick to go and the triangle brick. Now I can pull them from the prefab. So I can just click on my prefabs and pull them in there. Or if I choose the circle selector next to it, <coughs> pardon me, if I go to the scene, I can access any of the game manage any game objects in the scene. If I go to assets, I can just choose square brick. And then also circle selector, triangle brick. Okay, cool. So now I know what I'm supposed to create. So what I'm going to do here is back in my game manager script, in my start method, I'm going to create um, a certain number of those at uh, a certain number of those positions. So what I'm going to use for that is a for loop. So I'm going to say for, and this is going to, a loop is something that's going to keep going until its conditions are met. So we're going to say for, we're going to use integer i, and then we're going to set it equal to zero to start, and then use a semicolon to separate that from the next condition. So that's where we're starting at, with i equal to zero. We're going to stop when, or we're going to keep doing it so long as i is less than spawn points dot length, how many spawn points there are. And then the last condition is what you do after each um, loop is done. And I'm just going to do i++, plus plus, which means that you're going to add 1 to it. Um, and my parentheses, open curly bracket, enter twice, close curly bracket. So this is going to create a loop that's going to go through this and um, do a specific thing. Uh, like, for example, it'll go through when i is 0. Uh, and then once it reaches the end, it'll go through again for uh, i is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it won't do 6 because 6 is equal to the length of the spawn points. So it'll only do 0 through 5, which is 6 things, believe it or not. So just to show you that this is going to work, I'm going to do debug.log. This is just a way for you to check whether or not things are happening. And I'm going to have it debug.log i. So if I go in here to Unity, check to see if I made any mistakes. If I hit play, in my uh, console, which is where debug.log stuff goes, I see the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it placed each of those there each time it went through the loop. The first time it went through the loop, I was 0, so it placed a 0. Then I was 1, so it placed a 1. I was 2, so it placed a 2. 3 for 3, 4 for 4, 5 for 5. And then it didn't do a 6, because 6 would be equal to the length of the spawn point. So let me just get out of play mode here. I'm also going to turn my background back on because I can use that now. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have it um, check whether or not uh, a specific... Um, actually, I'm going to have it go through each of the, um, each of the spawn points and then decide if that spawn point should have a square or a triangle brick. And I'll just have it do for each of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it choose randomly if it should be square or triangle. So what I'm going to do is spawn, uh, actually, I'm going to use the instantiate call. And I'm going to instantiate it randomly between square and triangle on each of the bricks. And then I'll talk about object pooling in the next video. So I'm going to instantiate, which is the name of the command. And what I want to instantiate is a square brick. And where I want to instantiate it is at spawn points um, is i uh, dot position. So I don't have to do dot transform dot position because the spawn points are all already transformed. If I made this array up here an array of game objects, then this would have to be dot transform dot position. And then I'm going to do um, it needs a quaternion rotation. So I'm going to do 
quaternion.identity. And quaternion.identity just means there's no rotation on it, no x, y, or z rotation. So if I save this right now, it should create square bricks on each of those, uh, each of those spawn points, which isn't what I want, but we'll fix this in a minute. If I hit play, you'll see that I got square bricks everywhere. Their health is 10, and their colors are all random. Uh, okay, cool. So not so bad so far. Now, I want it to sometimes do a triangle brick. So to make it sometimes do one brick and sometimes do the other, I'm going to do uh, have the game choose a random integer between 0 and 2, which means it doesn't include 2, which means it's actually 0 or 1. So I'm going to do int brick to create equals random.range. And my range is from 0 to 2, but not including 2. Then I'm going to say if brick to create double equals again is equal to zero, and it's double equals because we're checking to see if its value is something. So if brick to create is equal to zero, then we're going to instantiate a square brick. Else if brick to create is equal to one. And I don't have to have an else if statement here. I could just use an else statement, and that would be fine. But I'm using an else if statement just I don't know, for funsies. My little bit here. I'm going to grab this instantiate code rather than having to type it again. I'm just going to copy it, paste it down here, and instead of instantiating the square brick, we're going to instantiate the triangle brick. So I'm going to save this, pop back into Unity, let this think for a little bit. There we go. And if I hit play, there we go. So I've got square bricks and triangle bricks. Their color is random, and their health is 10, because that's what we said it to be in the last video. Well, two videos ago, I think. Uh, okay, now, I only want at most four of these. So actually, let's just say that we're going to do... Uh, doo -doo -doo. So up here, in my start method, I'm also going to have um, an integer, which is how many bricks I want to start with. I'm actually going to create this as just a, a global variable, so I can change it in the um, in the inspector. So let's do public int number of bricks to start. I like nice long variable names. It always it keeps me from getting confused. And yeah, we're going to save this. Pop back in Unity. And then go to my game manager and number of bricks to start. I'm going to say it's four. So there we go. Now I'm also going to create an integer here, which is it's going to be int number of bricks created, and that's equal to zero. Single equals because I'm setting the value of this. I'm not checking its value. And then in here, um, every time I spawn a new brick, I'm going to do number of bricks created plus plus, meaning I'm going to increase it by one every time I instantiate a new brick. And then I'm going to encapsulate all of this inside another if statement, which is if number of bricks created is less than or equal to number of bricks to start, curly brace, and I'm going to go down here and close that curly brace. Save it. So now it should only do the first four, which isn't exactly what I want, but it's better. So then going back in here, I'm going to hit play, and there we go. Um, she created five that time. Why did it create five? Oh, because I started at zero. Um, this should be strictly less than, because then it'll do um, zero, one, two, three, uh, but not four, and zero, one, two, three is actually four. So if I go back in Unity, and the reason it didn't do the first one is because the first one is down at the bottom. So it did two, three, four, five, six, but not one. 
Now it'll do two, three, four, five, but not six or one. So if we hit play, there we go. So it's creating four. Okay, so this is the basics of creating bricks. Um, we'll go over this a little bit more next time. Thanks so much.